Morning Family First Love Church. Here we are, Devos once again. This is a great part of the day, you know, being able to spend this time with you and uh, just relish the Word of God. How fortunate we are. And I hope that we're all playing, praying for, uh, for the unsaved in our community. I hope we're all praying for the people that come to church that don't yet know our King, that might find Him, find His truth, find His grace, and find, as we're studying on, on Sundays now, um, Philippians, uh, His joy, His great joy. So we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for the grace that you've given us. So here we go, you guys. We're going to be looking at verse 6 in Philippians chapter, I mean, in Galatians chapter 2. Uh, but from those who seem to be something, whatever they were, it makes no difference to me. So these people, these Jews that were coming in insisting that the, uh, the, the Christians keep the law of Moses, um, uh, they seemed to be something. They were promoting themselves as being leaders, but yet they were outside the faith. They weren't in the faith. They were from a completely different thing. And so, uh, but from those who seemed to be something, whatever they were, Paul's not acknowledging that they're anything of importance, even though that he was the top Jew in Jerusalem um, at the time of his salvation. So uh, he's like, I, I got nothing for that. It means nothing to me. And I, I honor Gamaliel, my, 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 my rabbi, I, I, I honor Moses, I, I honor the law of God, but it doesn't have anything to do with my salvation. My salvation is uh, apart from everything except Jesus Christ. And so it's a beautiful thing. And, and so, but uh, he says, uh, God shows no personal favoritism to no man, for those who seem to be something added nothing to me. So appearances aren't always a, a, a legitimate thing to believe. And so, but on the contrary, when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised had been committed to me, and I have to tell you that probably scared the heck out of them because nobody knows more about the law than Paul. And so uh, when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised had been committed to me as the gospel for the circumcised was to Peter, for he who worked effectively in Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised also worked effectively in me to the Gentiles. And when James and Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, and they were indeed the top of the food chain when it came to the, uh, the new faith, the new really religion, Christianity, um, perceived that the grace had been given to me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. And this is so cool because... Wouldn't you think that they would be super suspicious of, of, of Saul after having been the murderer of, of, of Christians? And yet, God showed them and opened their eyes, as God will do. God will open our eyes to things that might be difficult for us to understand or believe. But he did that with the uh, rest of the apostles. He, he, he caused their hearts to believe that Paul was the real thing. And that's how God is, man. He causes our hearts to believe. All we have to do is to go, show me. And, and, and he will, and he will cause our hearts to believe the things that he says are true and prove them through evidence of experience. I, I stand up in that pulpit and I preach and I, and I watch people change and I watch people that don't change and I pray hard for the people that don't change. But when I see somebody come in and they, and they don't have that understanding of the truth of the gospel. And then one day, maybe a worship song is playing and all of a sudden their eyes light up and they're like, oh my gosh, I get it. I get it. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So then you see that um, it says, and when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. They desired only that we should remember the poor, the very thing that I was eager to do. But the Bible tells us that it, circumcision of the body really means nothing whatsoever. It was a law that was established with Abraham by God. And, and, um, but when Christ was born a virgin, as a, of a virgin and crucified for our salvation, then... That's the only covenant that has any matter. That's the only covenant that has any 
effect eternally on us for, for, for eternal life. And so we find that um, that's all that matters. So we believe in Jesus Christ, that he was crucified, that he was born of a virgin, that he was crucified, that, that he rose from the dead, and that it's by him that we are saved, and that it's through believing in him that we have eternal life. And what a wonderful and beautiful thing that is, at least at, I've gotten to watch it for 30 years as a pastor. I've gotten to watch lives change so dramatically. I've seen people crawl in here like just broke down. And now they're married and own a business and, and, and have kids. And, and it's like, I, I got some really, really, really dear friends who came in here with three flat tires. And now they got a life that's enviable to the glory of God through Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for First Love Church. Thank you for the people that you've brought here. Thank you for this family that we've become. Thank you for the support that we are willing to give to each other. Thank you. Thank you for this beautiful building, Lord. Thank you for Nikki and Matt especially. And uh, Lord, I just want to pray for our church that you fill it up with people who need you, hungry people, Lord God, who just are missing, missing the beauty of life, the simplicity and the gratitude available to us through you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Love you guys. See you manana. This is First Love Church. Welcome home.